Hello everyone, back to you today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days for today's second video. It takes us into the second half of November. Uh, we're also going to have a look at Beijing Climate Centre for the next 40 days. That takes us well into December, start of winter 2018-19. Uh, can you believe? We're going to begin by having a look at the Arctic and North Atlantic cross days. So quite a lot to cram into uh, today's videos. We might just be seeing the first uh, hints of something a little bit colder for the final week to 10 days. When we did the gather of these uh, November forecasts, we did speculate that we might get a colder sort of final week to 10 days in November. We might just be starting to see the very first hints of that within some of the model outputs. I'll talk you through that. Uh, in a second. But just say that today's first video was a five day forecast. The uh, video chat and written version are together on the five day forecast page. So it's going to be an unsettled five days coming up. There's going to be quite a bit of wet weather uh, around. There will be drier spells in between. So not all bad news. And temperatures are generally staying uh, quite mild. This evening, we've got the third update for Christmas. That'll be with you around uh, seven o'clock. So we're going to start off by having a look at the Arctic Oscillation Observed and Forecast chart. So the black line here tells us where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. The red line's at the end where Jeff Sommel's forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. Remember, it's just an index that's reflecting the state of the atmosphere. It's not driving anything. It's just helping to tell us what the atmosphere is doing over the North Pole. When the Arctic Oscillation is in a positive phase, you've got low pressure up over the pole, and at this time of year, you will be strengthening the zonal flow, be strengthening the westerlies when you've got low pressure up over the pole. Conversely, when the Arctic Oscillation is negative, you've got high pressure, you've got blocking up over the pole, you'll generally or typically weaken the zonal flows, uh, weaken westerlies, and blocking is route pushing cold air out of the pole and down into mid latitudes. But in a very prolonged uh, run of positive Arctic oscillation conditions, going right way back into the summer, we can go back to the start of July uh, with this. There have been a few little episodes of negativity of the AO, but generally been in a very positive phase. We did go more negative though uh, at the end of October into the beginning of uh, November. We're rather negative there. That's associated with that cold snap that we had in the final week of uh, October. Where we are right now is very close to neutral. So we're neither particularly positive or negative with the AO. We're forecast to stay uh, quite close to neutral for the next few days. Then I think we're going to go into a bit of a positive phase in, uh, say, around five to seven days' time. But after that, we've got a huge amount of scatter. You'll notice within the GFS ensembles, we've got a few ensemble members that are going for very positive conditions of the AO, really going into essentially positive territory. We've also got those that are falling off a cliff, those ensemble members just there. They are going for very extensive northern blocking. Uh, so that's a huge amount of scatter within the GFS ensemble in the extended range. That's kind of like heading in towards the final week of November. A huge amount of scatter. I think overall there are probably more ensemble members there that are on the negative side than are on the positive side. But there's not a lot in it. It's probably very close, around a 60-40 split negative to positive. So quite where we go in the final week of November, I'm not sure. But certainly there are several uh, GFS ensemble members that are really producing extensive northern blocking now for this final week of uh, November. They must be producing extensive northern blocking to be sending the Arctic Oscillation in those individual GFS uh, ensemble runs down into very negative uh, territory. So you're going to have to wait and see where that's going, but it could be picking up on the first signs of something colder coming up for the uh, final week of November, which we have been expecting that we get something cold in the final week of November. NAO is the same idea. Again, the black line tells us where we've been with the NAO. The red line's at the end where GFS Subble's forecasting NAO to go. As with the AO, we've been in very positive territory with the North Atlantic Oscillation going right way back into the start of the summer. We can go back to uh, early uh, July, just there in positive uh, territory. Again, when we had that drop in the AO uh, in the second half of October, we also had a drop in the NAO as well, going negative for that final week, 10 days of uh, October, including that cold snap that we had at the end of last month. Where we are right now is back into sort of weekly positive to neutral NAO uh, territory, and we're going to stay around neutral with the NAO for the next few days as well. We see that from a GFS ensemble member. 
members. As we head up towards the middle part of November, we're looking at a uh, more positive phase of the NEO. So it looks like for a few days, going up to the middle of the month, the NEO and the AO are both going to go into positive territory. This tells us that Wesley's are going to be a bit strengthened and uh, we're likely, say, pretty mild, I would have thought, up to the middle of November anyway. But after that, you'll see that again, we do have quite a bit of scattering the extended range of these ensembles. A few of them are staying positive, but actually most of these ensemble members are going down into negative territory with the NAO. So we've got both the AO and the NAO at least hinting that uh, a shift could be underway towards the final week to 10 days of the month into negative territory. If we get the AO and the NEO going negative in the final week to 10 days of November, uh, we are very likely, I would have thought, to pull off some car weather. You never guarantee anything because sometimes, even when you have an extensive amount of northern blocking and you have the um, NEO going negative, you can, we can still come away with mild weather. Remember in the UK, for car weather, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong a lot of the time. So ne there's never a guarantee for cold conditions in the UK in the winter because of our place in the world perched on the edge of Europe and also with the warm Atlantic Ocean next to us. But if you get the AO and the NAO going negative, it's a really quite a decent sign that you're in for something quite a bit colder. So let's wait and see. It's a long way off. We're talking about the final week or so, 10 days to week of November. It's a very long way off. It's all within the unreliable uh, time frame of the GFS output. But the hints might just be there of this slightly colder or maybe rather significantly colder end to the month that we have uh, sort of thought about for a little while. These are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles. So again, these are depicting every single member of the GFS ensemble as an individual uh, coloured line. But this time, we're looking at temperature, upper air temperatures and precipitation. So the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average. We're looking at London uh, today. So for the next week or so, we're going to be about average uh, in terms of the upper air temperatures. Uh, with the um, with the upper air temperature. So we're going to be about average. However, we're probably still going to be a bit above average down on the surface because this is associated with quite an Atlantic flow. So particularly at night, we're not really going to get the cold nights that, uh, that uh, deliver us sort of um, cold of an average temperature anomaly. So I'll show you the temperature anomaly chart in a moment. It will be uh, milder than average. And this is something that you do see in the winter. We're not quite at winter yet, but we are far enough towards the winter to now that when we're close to average, when we're close to that red line uh, with the upper air temperatures, uh, if it's an Atlantic flow, then even although the upper air temperatures are close to average, down on the surface, we will still be coming away milder than average because of rain bands moving in from the Atlantic. Too much breeze, too much cloud to stop the temperatures falling at night in particular. And it's cold nights really that you need at this time of year to get a cold of an average temperature anomaly. So um, average upper air temperatures for the next week, a little bit milder than average on the surface. After that, we see the upper air temperatures really going up again around the middle part of the month. This is the 15th through to around the 19th of uh, November. Looks very mild in that period. Might get another push of southerly winds. Beyond that, though, we see a lot of scatter appearing again. So we have got some of these ensemble members here that are uh, generally staying quite mild into this third week and heading up towards just towards the final week of November. But there are several of them now that are doing a little bit of a plummet going really quite cold through this, uh, through this third week of um, November, particularly the second half of the third week of November. So kind of like 21st, 22nd, 23rd of November. The ensemble mean, which is the white line, is dropping through this period. So it tells us that the ensemble is actually seeing a drop in the upper air temperatures uh, at the very extended range, albeit there's quite a bit of scatter in there. So again, we might just see in the first hints there 
uh, with image GFS ensembles that uh, something colder could be coming up for the final week to 10 days of November. Sort of very long way off that the hints might there. Up until then, it's rather mild of an average of the next week and then potentially for a few days uh, around the middle part of the month becoming very mild. Precipitation wise, so we've got a lot of wet weather to come on Friday to Saturday. It'll be really heavy rain. And uh, really strong winds as well coming across the country. Then we go into a showery scenario after that. From around the 15th, middle of the month onwards, probably trending a little bit drier, uh, if anything. So maybe after this unsettled spell, but we're going through the second week of November, coming drier again through the third week of uh, November. Temperature anomalies, as I say, I said they're becoming out above average, so the temperature anomaly from the 7th to 15th of November is still milder than average. Even though the upper air temperatures are going to be around average, the um, surface temperature is going to be a little bit above average again because it's an, it's an Atlantic flow, holds the temperatures up at night. You don't get frosty nights, and that overall will mean that you come away with a milder than average temperature anomaly. Precipitation anomalies from the 7th through to the 15th of November. A little bit drier than average on the eastern side of the country. Wetter than average or average to wetter than average in more western regions. This was a midnight run of the GFS. So this is for Saturday. Low pressure racing in the Atlantic. And it's a wet and windy end to Friday and through to Saturday. You'll probably probably one of those nights, Friday night, when you hear the uh, windows rattling a little bit. We go through to Sunday, and we're in the showery west to southwest flow. So that's why the um, temperature is still going to be milder than average, even though the upper air temperatures are average. So the, air, the upper air temperatures are actually not all that warm, because it's coming around this low pressure from the northern Atlantic going into the UK. Uh, like that. So it's not a particularly mild source with the upper air temperatures. In fact, it's probably rather cool with the upper air temperatures. But it's a very, very long sea trap that we've got here coming across the warm Atlantic Ocean and then into the UK on the southwesterly winds. So the cool upper air temperatures are modified a little bit anyway. But the main reason that you come out with a mild and average temperature even though the upper air temperatures are close to average. The main reason is just really the strength of the wind. You see the isobars are quite tightly packed, so it's fairly breezy. There would be showers coming in with this as well. So again, it's just too breezy to uh, allow the temperatures to fall at night. Temperatures will hold up probably around mid single digit temperatures. And uh, you'll tend to get showers as well, rather uh, uh, evolving around these areas of low pressure. So that's the reason uh, for that. We go up towards the middle of next week. Looks like we start to build up this high pressure. Remember, around the middle of the month, the upper air temperatures were pushing up again. And that's because we've got these southerly winds returning. So we've got high pressure building through Central Europe and also beginning to push a little bit northwards to southern Scandinavia with low pressure out in the Atlantic, and so if you follow the isobars back, the air is originating from kind of like North Africa, Mediterranean, pushing up into the west of Europe. So that probably lifts the temperatures back up to the mid teens Celsius through the middle of November, and that's the middle of next week. We're heading up towards day 10, and high pressure increasingly exerting its seam. It's all looking very flabby, still a very mild upper air temperature, but what you could get with that is um, fog, maybe dense fog, your skies are clear enough, could form uh, as we go into the middle part of November. Beyond that, in the more extended range, what the midnight run of the GFS was doing was building this high pressure over Scandinavia a little bit, trying to get low pressure to move in from off the Atlantic, all again looking rather slack. But at the very end, it uh, did actually build high pressure around Greenland. So we are a long way out now. We're up to uh, Wednesday, the 21st of November. Uh, and looking back, we're beginning to get high pressure starting to appear in the northern Atlantic. It's beginning to push up towards Greenland as well. You notice northerly winds are starting to try to push down from the Arctic into the west of Europe. And indeed, that is what happened on the midnight run of the GFS. So we get to, as far as we can go to Friday, the 23rd of November. We've got a proper block there over uh, Greenland. So this will be one of the ensemble members that we saw in the Arctic Oscillation and North Atlantic Oscillation uh, observed and forecast chart. This will be one of the members that is going off the cliff a little bit with the AO and the NEO. The reason because of that blocking forming over Greenland, and yes, that did push those winds into the north, so starting to bring down proper Arctic northerly winds there uh, on the midnight run of the GFS. You can see the upper air temperatures are rapidly turning cold from the north. 
That's a very long way out, of course, and it's very speculative. And this is what the uh, 6 o'clock run, the latest run, of the GFS was doing. So again, we've got this deep area of low pressure out west of Scotland on Saturday. Wet and windy weather racing across the country late Friday and into Saturday. Into next week, rather unsettled, or showery, I suppose we could say, for the early part of next week. And then again, this high pressure building over and to the east of the UK. So winds returning into the south. That's that push up in the upper air temperatures that are occurring in the second half of next week around the middle part of November. Again, follow the isobars back. The air is originating from the Mediterranean. So that will definitely be lifting temperatures back into the teen Celsius again for the middle part of uh, November. We get to day 10 and we're moving that high pressure more towards Scandinavia and actually a little bit to the north of Scandinavia with its low pressure deepening out in the Atlantic. So wet and windy weather is trying to uh, come back. In the more extended range, the 6 o'clock run of GFS also looks quite interesting. Cast your eyes up to the far top right-hand corner of the chart. You've got a very, very large area of high pressure building up there, around 1,050, nearly 1,055 millibars. Um, proper block sitting just to the north of uh, Scandinavia and Russia. So that's a proper Siberian high that's uh, building there. It's having a really good go to start pushing wind in from the east. We're not talking about mild easterly as with that. It's actually starting to drag uh, proper cold Arctic air down, or Siberian air down uh, with it. We are very close to uh, ridging this area of high pressure, which is kind of like from the Azores, this area of high pressure just here. We're very close to sucking that into this huge sort of blocking feature that's setting up across northern Russia. Uh, it doesn't actually come off on this run, and the reason for that is this deep area of low pressure that we've got in the Atlantic to the south of Greenland just here, very deep area of low pressure is developing at the same time. So that just act, acts as a stopper instead of reaching this high pressure that we've got close to us up to that Siberian high. What we actually do is just run the Westerlies in over the top if we break that link between the two high pressure. But it really is very, very close. And again, it's just hints that in the final week to 10 days of November, something colder could happen. Whether that's from the east, whether it's from the north, we was never sure about that when we did the November month head broadcast, but we did think something colder could happen the final week of uh, November. It looks like those hints are still there within the model output. That's how we finish up with this um, six o'clock run of GFS on Friday, 23rd of November. No sign of a Greenland high, you'll notice. No sign of the northerly. We've just got this high pressure still here to the west southwest of the UK. That's kind of like the blocking feature up there, which just re does reduce a little bit from its central pressure of 1,050 millibars down to around 1,000 and 35 millibars, but you'll notice with the upper air tension, there's quite an extensive cold pool starting to move into Europe, courtesy of that blocking feature from northern Russia. So again, just for hints, hints are there, but the final week to 10 days, we've got to watch out for something colder start to develop. Uh, ECF WF looks like that. We're going to go to day 10 with that, so you're not going to see anything, uh, any hints with this one of anything colder. Uh, Saturday, wet and windy weather is coming in across the country. Sunday to Monday, showery through to the early part of next week. Then the pressure starts to rise from the south. We're heading up towards day 10 with high pressure building just to our east. It is actually um, developing into quite a blocking feature across western parts of Russia, not 1,050 millibars. It's going up to around 1,040 millibars. Uh, so where that goes beyond that would be quite interesting uh, to see. Would that high pressure strengthen further across the northeast of Europe? Let's have a look at what the upper air temperatures are looking like across Europe at day 10. So actually, most parts of Europe are still quite mild, just turning a little bit colder over in the east of Europe, but generally a mild upper air temperature. That's because we've not been able to pull any proper cold Arctic or Siberian air in at that point up to day 10. But of course, the interest is a little bit beyond that. That's Saturday 17th of November, day 10. So the interest is a little bit beyond that, more like 20th of November and beyond. And then the GEM looking like this, wet and windy on Saturday, uh, showery through to the start of next week. Uh, we're heading up towards day 10. 
Again, building that high pressure up. This time it's building up more over Scandinavia uh, by day 10, which is Saturday, 17th of November. Begin to block off these areas of low pressure in the Atlantic. You'll notice around the back of this high pressure, we're probably just starting to try and pull down some colder air from the northeast, although I don't think the upper air temperatures for northern Europe would be particularly cold. It's a little bit of minus 10, 850 HPA air moving in towards Scandinavia. Actually, very warm with the upper air temp. Got the plus 10 Celsius ice firm there across central parts of Europe. Although, bear in mind, it's under high pressure, so you'd probably be tending to favour tending to favour a little bit of fog. Not as warm on the surface as it would be uh, aloft in that kind of situation. It looks like we are going to get a very mild middle part of the month, though, those southerly winds. And then we've got to be watching out what's happening in the final uh, week to 10 days, I reckon. We'll just have a look at the Asian climate centre. These are 500 millibar heights broken down into 10-day periods. The first 10-day period will take us from the 6th through to the 15th of November. The coming 10 days uh, has above-average heights to the north, actually, quite interestingly. And uh, we're close to this area of below-average heights over the UK. So it looks unsettled overall in the next 10 days and relatively mild as well because you're bringing up the air uh, rather like that. So southerly winds, low pressure, never far away, showery and mild for the coming uh, sort of 10 days. Then we're up to the next 10 days. It's the 16th to 25th of November. Below average heights then weakening, but still very close to the country. Above average heights in the middle of the Atlantic. It looks like the uh, wind probably going a little bit more towards the northwest. So probably still fairly unsettled and a bit cooler at that point as well. Uh, then the next 10 day period is the 26th of November through to the uh, 5th of December. Below average heights are extending through Western Europe. Above average heights are in, are in the middle of the Atlantic. It looks like that one could be quite cold, actually. But there is a dip within the 500 millibar flow, I think, with the trough there and the jet stream. So going on to the cold side of the jet, with a trough of low pressure, that could be quite a cold end to uh, November, start to December. Albeit there's no real blocking feature. There's nothing really to push true Arctic air uh, out of the North Pole. But nevertheless, that could be rather chilly, I would have thought, to end uh, November. And maybe a little bit of winchiness uh, possible with that as well. Then we go through to the final 10-day period, which is the 6th through to the 15th of uh, December and the above average heights are developing over and to the northeast of the UK. So we're trying to set up uh, a blocking feature over Scandinavia and also back into western parts of Russia. That will be trying to bring in easterly winds into much of Europe. Uh, we pro Those easterly winds probably just stop a little bit short of the UK and western Europe. And the reason is that we haven't reached the high pressure properly up towards Scandinavia. At this point, we're not getting low pressure from the Atlantic cutting underneath it into Mediterranean. So we're probably mainly dry, quite chilly, uh, probably frosty nights, probably quite a bit of fog. And for sort of eastern parts of Europe and probably southeastern Europe, very cold there with Siberian air being brought in from uh, sort of Russia. But probably stopping just short of Central Europe at that point. Of course, that's a 10-day anomaly, so it could be uh, evolving. It may be by the time you get through to the middle of December, you might get that high pressure properly into Scandinavia and get the wind properly into the east. If you do pull in those easterly winds across Europe like that, you'll start to cut the low pressure and the jet streams in the Atlantic. You'll start to cut that underneath it in towards um, in towards Spain, Portugal and the Mediterranean. So it ends on quite an interesting note there, the Beijing Client Centre, in the final 10 days, where that goes into the second half of December as we begin to move towards Christmas. That is um, a little bit of a mouth-watering prospect. But that's very speculative. Let's come back to what we know for the next week to 10 days. So we're starting off unsettled. The next few days are going to be very unsettled uh, indeed. Wet and windy weather coming up on Friday into Saturday. Next week, starting showery, we're gradually going to raise the heights to the south and the east, turn the winds into southerlies. That could bring milder air back for the, <coughs> excuse me, for the middle part of the month. Temperatures probably pushing back into mid-teens Celsius uh, around this time next week. From around the 20th, 21st of November onwards, are we going to get this colder end to November? There are a few hints there within the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation, 
and GFS ensembles. So we need to wait and see whether uh, the final week to 10 days do, uh, does indeed turn colder or not. That will be the focus of the videos I would have thought over the next week or so. Right, come back this evening when we've got the third Christmas update that will be with you on the Christmas updates page. We'll be again looking at the long range CFS BG model, see what it's showing uh, for Christmas. So that's all for now, and thanks for watching.